Hey everyone, it's Jen. Welcome back to my channel. Um, today I thought I would show you a traveler's notebook that I just made. I shared it on Instagram um, a couple days ago. And I've had some requests for uh, tutorials on how to make a traveler's notebook. And I am by no means an expert and I've followed other tutorials uh, to learn how to make them, but I'll show you my process and I will link below some of the people that have helped me um, figure out how to make them. Um, they're really easy to do. You do need a few things and I'll go through those as, when, when we get to it. But first let me show you the one that I made um, recently. This is a uh, regular size traveler's notebook and I laminated it so of course it'll be durable. And um, I made a charm for the, um, for the for the spine, made out of pom-poms and a tassel. Um, I put a cute little like old-fashioned VW bus kind of thing on a charm for the elastic. And I made a pen clip. And I also made some um, embellished paper clips. So on the inside, you can take the elastic off, um, open it up, and I have a pocket on the front and I printed out a 2020 calendar and laminated it. Thought that would be handy to have. And I, somebody did suggest to include um, a calendar in my notebooks. I think that's a great idea. And these, the inserts I used, I did get at Hobby Lobby. So um, there's this one, which has lined pages. I think, oh no, they're different. Okay. And this one with the eyelashes has a dot grid. And then this one just has lines. Okay, that one has lines also. And then in the back, I added a um, zipper pouch and I put in there some stickers, some plan planner stickers, uh, you know, just to add some fun to your traveler's notebook. And in this pocket, there's, or in this side, there's three separate pockets. I think they're supposed to be for, you know, business cards or whatever, but I just put some narwhal um, page flags. I thought those were cute. Of course, you know, whoever I'm giving this to doesn't need to use them. They could take them out and use them for something, use the pockets for something else. Same for the stickers. You could keep pens in there or, you know, little notepads, something like that. And then at the end, here's the um, um, clip I made, the pen clip. Those are so easy to make. All you have to do is take a binder clip and glue some elastic to it and then just slip a pen in. So, and that's the back. And that's a traveler's notebook. Doesn't take that long to do. It does take a few steps, which uh, which we'll go through and make one together. Okay, so there's that one. All right, so let's start to make a traveler's notebook together. A few things you're gonna need are um, two to three pieces of 12 by 12 paper. Um, two to three because if it's not double-sided like this one is you want to have two pieces put together for the cover so um, like when you open it up it's not just blank on the inside see this one is double-sided so it has a, a pattern on the inside and I do recommend that you use a double-sided piece of paper instead of two pieces put together it's just it it sits better um, if you're Desperate, you don't have a double-sided piece, you can go ahead and use a uh, double-sided, I mean, you know, two pieces together. But I'm going to be using this one um, for my cover. All right, and then after that, you're going to need a paper trimmer, so you can cut it to size. You're going to need a uh, large scoreboard with a scoring tool or, you know, bone folder, whatever, whatever you use to make score lines. And then you're going to need, oh, you're gonna need some elastic cord. This is one I use, I got it from AliExpress. I think it is two millimeters thick. It doesn't say anywhere on there. I think that's what, I, I've had it for a long time and there's a lot on here. Um, but I like that, I like this with for, especially the bigger traveler's notebooks. If you're making um, a smaller one or it, it's, you know, it doesn't have to be, you know, super, um, secure you can use a thinner kind that you can get at like Hobby Lobby this is 1.2 millimeter elastic cord 
And I do like to use this for a smaller traveler's notebook. It, notebooks, it, it's just more proportional, but, and these are very red, readily available. I have a hard time finding two millimeter cord, but uh, yeah, so anyway. And then you're gonna need a small hole punch. I use my crocodile tool and I use, you know, there are two different sizes. I use the smaller one. And you're also gonna need something to poke a hole in the middle of the spine, which I'll show you right here. See right there? Because you can't really get the um, uh, hole punch in there. So I use this, I have this sewing tool that has a, and on, okay, that's a seam ripper, but on this side it has just like a pokey tool. I don't know what else to call it, just a pokey tool. So that's what I use. And then, of course, there'll be various accessories at the end that we will uh, talk about once we get this done. Okay, so let's get started. So first what I'm going to do is decide, first, well, you have to decide on what insert you're using. Um, I have a big stash of notebooks. So what I did was I went through and found uh, a set that I wanted to use. So this is a set. These are um, five by seven traveler's notebooks. And these came in a three pack at Michael's. They're in the planner section. Sometimes they go on sale, so that's a good time to get them. Um, and then what I did once I picked these out, I decided to go with these colors to go with the theme for the rest of the notebook. That's why I picked out this for the cover because it's a very similar color scheme. Um, it's a little plainer, which I like for a cover, but it still has a nice pattern. And the inside is kind of crazy, but that's okay just because it's the inside of the book. So I've got that. And okay, so obviously these measurements I'm going to give you are for five by seven traveler's notebooks. If you are doing inserts of a different size, you'll have to adjust accordingly. Um, but it, but that's not hard to do. And I'll explain that as I go along. Let me move my notes over a little. Okay. So first for the five by seven cover, we are going to make um, the top an eighth of an inch bigger. So it'll be seven and an eighth inch. So I'm gonna cut the whole thing down to seven and an eighth. Oops, sorry. Just shook my tripod. Okay, that's seven and a quarter, seven and an eighth. Or thereabouts. <laughs> okay. So I've got that done. So this is seven and an eighth by twelve. Um, for this traveler's notebook, it has to be eleven inches long. So we're just gonna cut an inch off. Okay. All right. So we have seven and a quarter, seven and an eighth by eleven. And um, the way I figured that out is each end of the traveler's notebook is five inches, right? The bottom of it. So you take five inches. Five inches is ten inches. And then you add an eighth of an inch for each side, so that's ten and a quarter. And then I wanted a three-quarter inch spine, so that's eleven inches total. So basically, if you have a different size, if you have different size inserts, you want to add about an eighth of an inch top to bottom, an eighth of an inch for each um, width, each width of the uh, cover. For you know what I mean, for the back cover and the front cover. And then you want to add a half inch to three quarters of an inch for the spine. Um, I tend to add a little bit more because uh, it depends on what I'm adding inside. Like I have the inserts, but I'm also going to create a folder and I'm going to add a dashboard. So that adds some more um, bulk to it. So you want to have enough room for the spine. All right. So then you get out your scoreboard. And we are going to score... Well, let me turn it around. We're going to score it on the inside line. We're going to score it at five and an eighth. So that is right there. And you can either count over or just flip it over and score it at five and an eighth again. OK, 
Okay, so that's five and an eighth, three quarters, five and an eighth, that's 11 inches. Okay, move that out of the way. I'm just going to fold it on those score lines, both sides. All right, and I forgot to tell you you want a uh, corner rounder to round the corners. And I have this We Are Memory Keepers one. I think I got it at Hobby Lobby. It has different size uh, corners you can make. So I usually use the um, 10 millimeter one. And I usually end up turning it upside down so I could, oops, sorry about that guys. Turning it upside down so I could see it. And just flip it. Shake out the piece. Flip it again. And again. And again. Okay. So we have all four sides done. You can see it's taking shape. But, okay. And pretty soon we're going to laminate it. But before I laminate it, I like to add a little bit more decoration to the front. You don't want to add too much because uh, it has to be really flat for the lamination to work. Uh, so what I like to do is just take like a sticker or a piece of ephemera and just lightly glue it onto the onto the cover and then run it through the laminator just to add a little, you know, just a little interest to it. If you have a really patterned piece of uh, paper for the cover, you don't have to do that, but I like to use plain paper and then add some decorations usually. So I found this um, doodle bug piece of ephemera that I thought would be cute to put on the front. There's that one. And what is another piece I thought too? Hang on. That was, oh, and I had this one too, the sweet shop, which I think might be better because there's more pink in my inserts and it says life is sweet. So yeah, let's go with that. Okay, so what did I do with my tape? I think I brought it upstairs and I don't have it here. All right, hang on one second, let me get some more. I'm just gonna use a piece of uh, double-sided tape I got from Alina Crafts. You guys have probably all seen this. So this is really just to hold it in place when I get it to the, to the laminator. Okay, so I'm just going to add a piece there. Peel off the backing. And decide where we want it. I like to have it not right in the middle, just up a little bit. I just think it kind of, you know, breaks it up a little if you make it a little, little unsymmetrical. Okay. There we go. So this is ready for the laminator. And I got I got my laminator, I got it at Aldi last year of all places, and it's great. But you can get them at um, you know, anywhere, Walmart, Target, they're like $15, $20. And uh yeah, so I will be right back after I laminate this, okay? Okay, I'm back, and this is all laminated as you can see, nice and shiny. Um I trimmed it because uh, there was some extra on the side. So I used my paper trimmer and trimmed it and I used my corner rounder to round the corners. Sometimes it doesn't cut all the way through. So it's just a little hard for the, uh, for the plastic to go through the corner rounder. So I just take my little scissors and trim off the excess if that happens. No biggie, but you just wanna make it smooth so it's not, you know, you don't get scratched or anything on there. All the other ones cut okay though. All right, so there we have the cover. So now what you wanna do is fold it along those score lines you made. And I like to just take my big bone folder and just crease them down a little bit harder. Okay, so we have both of them done. All right, so there we have it. Our next step is to add the elastic bands. So you need your hole punch now. Get that out. 
All right, like I said, I use my crop dial and I use the, I don't know how big this hole is actually, but um, I thought it said one eighth. Yeah, it's a one eighth inch hole. Okay, so I use that, the one eighth, one eighth inch size and I put the little stopper down so when you put it into your traveler's notebook, the hole comes right where the uh, paper um, meets the laminated part. See, there's like a, so sorry, there's a little excess laminated part. You don't want to punch in there. You want to get all the way up to the paper. All right, and I just really eyeball it. First, you're going to make three holes. So first I do the one in the middle and then to the side and I usually just line up the edge with the edge of the crop dial and then do it on this side too. Hole so you can see it. Okay. And then they're all pretty much the same uh, distance from the edge. Okay. And then flip it around and do the same thing to the other side. So we have the one in the middle. These really don't need to be exact, so it's okay to just do it this way. Okay. So now we have three in the top and three in the bottom. Now we need one hole in the middle. And like I said, you can't use your hole punch unless you have a different one that I don't have. So I get, get a little cutting mat to protect your table. Um, get a ruler so you can measure the middle and your pokey tool. Okay, so this one should be seven inches, right? So it should be seven from one end of the paper to the other or seven and eighth, right? Okay, so the middle of seven and an eighth is, let's say three and a half plus um, a sixteenth. So, let me get my pokey side out. So we'll go three and a half plus a sixteenth. We'll make sure it's in the middle. Okay, so I'll be right there. And just press your hole in. Okay, and that's right in the middle, more or less. I'm gonna go on the inside, just move it around a little so you have a nice hole. All right, now for the elastic. Let's move all this stuff out of the way. Okay, like I said, I like to use my two millimeter elastic. Um, it's a little harder to get through all the holes, but uh, I like the way it, it's, it's sturdier once it's all done. So take your end of your elastic, go into one of the outside holes, one of the end holes, and pull some through. Just unwind a bunch of it. Oops. Okay. When you pull it through your cover, go to the hole directly across. Pull it through. And I'll take a little more. All right, then what you're going to do from the outside, okay, you go into the hole that's right next to it. That's the middle hole. Okay, then pull it down the center, go to the middle hole across. Okay. Then you're going to go into the next hole on the side. I need a little bit more length here, so just pull some out. Probably too much, but fix that after. Okay. All right. Then go into the last hole at the end. All right, so now what you wanna do, turn it around, go back into the middle hole. This is where it gets a little harder because uh, of the thick elastic. Actually, I'm gonna trim it so it has a more of a pointy tip. Okay. So now 
that is in the center. Okay, and I'm going to pull all the strands so they're pretty taut, not tight, because you want to be able to get your notebook inserts in there, all right? But you don't want them to fall around and flop around either. So, okay. And now we can cut off from the spool. So cut off about, about that much. All right, and now on this end, you're gonna go into this metal hole. Okay, and this, we're gonna tie the two ends together and that's gonna make your fourth loop. Okay, first I wanna make sure everything's nice and taut. Middle one's a little floppy. Let's see if we could tighten that up a little. Okay, that's better. All right, so just tie a knot a little bit away from the center. Tie it a little tight because you have to do a second knot. You gotta hold it down while you're tying. If you have a friend to help you, now would be a good time. But I don't, so, oops, let's see. All right, let's try that again. Okay, hold it down. It came loose again. Let's see. All right, that's good. Good. So now you can trim the ends. Trim them pretty short. Are four loops. That's for four different inserts. The next step is to make the loop that goes around that closes the traveler's notebook. This is probably the hardest. A lot of people do it with a needle and thread, but I don't really have a needle that has an eye big enough for this um, elastic cord. So what I do is I just push it through the hole. All right. So first, what you want to do is take a take a length off about little bit longer than the length of the cover, doubled. And you're going to push it through the hole here. And how do we do that? Good question. I use my pokey tool. And this usually takes a few tries, so don't despair. Okay, so I push it through and try and grab it on the other end. Okay, good. Um, no, that was not good because it was upside down. Ah, okay. <laughs> we have to go through the inside. Of course, the one time I get it through the first time. Okay. Maybe that's why. All right, so I'm pushing it through. All right, yeah, to the outside. Okay, and I haven't cut it off yet just because I'm not sure exactly how much I need. So what you want to do, now you have this loop on the outside, right? You want to practice and see how tight it is. Okay, now you got to be aware you're going to have stuff inside. But at the same time, you don't want it too loose either. So this seems pretty good. It's, it's pretty tight with nothing in it. So that means it'll be nice and taut when there are things in it. All right, so we're going to leave it at that length. So I'm going to cut off the spool. And we're gonna tie a double knot for the inside cord. Be careful not to pull it too much or else it'll make the loop shorter. Okay, so we have that. Trim the edges. Hopefully this is pretty clear. I'm not the best at tutorials, but you know, hopefully this will help at least, you know, if you watch if you watch a few different tutorials, maybe this will help you in some parts of it. Okay, so there we go. Look at that. Looks pretty good, right? And I thought I would show you how to make a folder, even though I'm not, I don't think I'm going to use one in this traveler's notebook, but um, it's, it's a great way to learn how to make uh, folders. And I, I learned it from somebody here on YouTube and I will link their video because I have it saved. It's not exactly the same, but uh, 
she did a really good job so I want to give her credit of course for this okay so this is going to be just a regular um, cardstock folder um, not laminated or anything like that so but I did use I am using double-sided paper again because uh, first of all it's stronger and also you know just make it prettier so for a folder for a 5 by 7 also known as a B6 Traveler's Notebook, you are going to cut your paper 10 and a half by 9 and a half. Okay, the long end, um, all right, the long end goes this way. So we're going to cut this end 10 and, 10 and a half and top to bottom 9 and a half. So let's do the top to bottom first. Okay, so that's nine, oops, nine and a half, it's right there. Okay, and then ten and a half. Okay, so nine and a half by ten and a half. Move the paper trimmer out of the way and get the scoreboard. There's a bunch of scoring in this uh, application. All right, you want to decide which is going to be the front and which is going to be the back or the inside. I think I will make this the front and the flowers the um, inside. Okay, so for the first score marks, hang on one second. Oh, where's my scorey thingy? There it is. Okay, so we are going to score it right in the middle I'm pretty sure to fold it in half yes okay so that is um five and a five and a quarter to be in the middle of ten and a half right yes okay so five and a quarter it's right in the middle okay that is done and then we're going to bring the bottom up three inches. So scored it three inches. Oh, rats. Okay, I made a little rip there, which I'm going to keep going because I'm not using this one for this traveler's notebook, but normally I would throw this out. Okay, and then we're going to add a half inch on each end. You hate it when you're scoring and you go through the page. It drives me crazy. Okay, so we've got all the score lines. Half an inch on each end, right in the middle, and three inches up from the bottom. Okay, move this out of the way. All right, the next step is you're going to cut off the um, little triangle or rectangle at the bottom. Stay, sorry, like right inside the line. Can you see what I'm doing? It's kind of hard with the pattern paper, but okay. And then right up to the line. Do that with both ends. Okay, so I've got those. All right, you can see where this is going, right? But we want to cut um, a little flap right here. So take it, unfold it, and fold it in half lengthwise. Okay, and then you're going to cut, you're going to start from the inside corner, and then go up about an inch, angled out, so the top is about an inch cut off. So you have this. And this is what the fold is going to look like. And what I do is for these ends, I add um, double-sided tape, double-sided tape. And I had just brought that over, right? Yep. So, I'll get out my double-sided tape again. And just put it, run it all down the end in that little margin we made. Go away. Okay. And 
down this one. Peel off the end or the back end. Fold in your flaps and press it down. There you go. There you have a folder you could put inside one of the elastics and it's all set. I also like to round the corners in these. I just think it gives it a little more finished look. Sometimes I have to use my uh, punch board if this is too thick. Let me see if it works. Oh, sorry about that. But that worked. Okay. Oh, my cat's at the door. It's working pretty good. the idea. See what happened? I didn't turn it upside down to see it. But whatever. And there you go. Hang on, let me let my cat in. Alright, cat. Come on in. Okay, sorry about that. Alright, so let's start putting together the traveler's notebook that we made. So here's the cover. And the inserts. Where did I put them? Oh, over there. Okay. Okay. So you could decide what order you want to put them in. Um, doesn't really matter for this one. So I'm going to put. Um, first. And this one. Just slide it. I want to put it in the middle of the insert. Usually there's like a stitch line. You can see. Like that. Stitched or stapled. Okay, and that goes in there. And then this one. And then if you're going to add a folder, I, I usually put them at the end. So the one we made would go like right here. And then I'd like to add some extra things. Um, I had made, I made this ahead of time. I made a dashboard. Um, I sewed together some vinyl. And on one side, I left, the po I left it a pocket so you could change what's inside. And I laminated a calendar and put it on a piece of paper. And then on the other side, I made it a shaker. So obviously I sewed it across the top. I sewed a piece of trim on it just to make it look kind of fun. And what I do with these is I like to slide these underneath everything in the notebook. They don't really go... Um, you know, around one elastic, they just go behind all of them. Like that. So that's fun, right? Just adds a little more interest to it. And the front inside, I like to add a pocket usually. And I did get these at Target in the dollar spot when they had back to school time going. They're um, adhesive square label pockets. They're a good size for a traveler's notebook, so um, you just peel them off and stick it on the inside cover. Make it somewhat even. Press it down. And voila. Okay, and then you could put, you know, whatever you want in there. Some stickers or uh, journaling cards. Um, I have more... Um, 
dashboards that I need. I don't think they'll fit in there. No. So what I would probably do is add these to the folder in the back. Now that, remember, this isn't the permanent folder because I did make a boo-boo. But I need these fun little dashboards just to change the inside of the traveler's notebook, right? Okay, and put that there. So we have that. You could add another pocket here if you wanted to. Um, I forgot to make an extra pen loop, but let me show you my, I showed you before, but let me show you how I did it in the other one. Very easy. You take a binder clip. Um, I think these are the one inch ones or three quarters of an inch ones. And I use elastic trim that I got at Walmart. It comes, uh, it's like in the sewing section, it comes on a spool. I'll show you. Not really a spool, but like a card. Um, yeah, so it comes in all different colors and sizes and patterns and widths. So, yeah, you just cut off as much as you need to go around a pen. And I use E6000 on this side and this side. And then when it's dry, I put the pen in. And it just makes an easy pen loop, very convenient. So that would go right there. Open it up. Oops, move over. Ta-da! And then you want to bling it out a little bit, right? What's a planner or a traveler's notebook without some charms? So I made this one for the front. And these are charms I got Hobby Lobby, maybe? I don't remember. I, I just take them off of whatever packaging they came in and I put them in my jewelry bin. So, I don't know. But anyway, I just added jump rings to them. And then a lobster claw. Oops, see that? Yep. And then you just clip it right onto the elastic. It just adds a little funness there. And then I made a tassel. And this one, I just used um, this cute little one that came in a pack from AliExpress. Just kind of fluttery. I thought it was good with the sweet theme. And then I added some wooden be beads that I also got from Ali. And... Sorry, it's not really focusing. And then a little, you know, fake jewel. And then a lobster claw clasp. If anybody wants to know how to make these, just let me know, okay? They're, I'm not an expert at these either, but the way I do it works for me. So I'll, I'll be glad to show you one day if you want to know. So then I just clip the, that into the one of the loops on the spine. There you go. Looking nice and jingly. And, oh, paper clips, right? Those are fun too. So I made a whole bunch of different embellished paper clips to show you guys. And then we can like pick out which ones we like. Sometimes I use uh, felties. And where did that one go that I made? Oh gosh, cats are fighting. Stop it, cats. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, guys. Okay, so this is like a felty I used and I hot glued it with the piece of felt onto a paper clip. I don't think that one's gonna work for this traveler's notebook. But the other ones are, um, <laughs> sorry, cats. Uh, they're um, resin pieces I've gotten from Allie or like this one I got from the Dollar Tree. And I just hot glued them all onto paper clips. This one was like a pencil topper that I just filled up with some glue and stuck a paper clip in there. So. You know anything you want you can use resin pieces or even like buttons that you can just chop the shank off with and then you've got an embellished paper clip all right cats stop hold on okay, sorry about that I had to break it up i don't know why they came in here to fight oh all right so i usually like to add three to four paper clips just for page markers and just to add some cuteness so this one is pretty cute. So I think it needs some cute charms. So let's go with, I think a narwhal is always a good idea. 
So we'll put one of those in there. <laughs> about the cats I'm so sorry okay and then how about oh well we have um, a cupcake that was from Aliexpress you know like the one day that I'm in here making a video that looks cute right okay and then something a little bit different maybe we'll add the panda head just to change it up a little bit I like to put them on like either the front or the back of an insert just so they kind of all nest together. And one more, let's see. Should we do the cloud or butterfly? How about butterfly? Cause that'll add um, a little bit more sparkle. And you can go about right there. Sorry. Now you can see, right? Ta-da. All right, so that is our Traveler's Notebook. You guys like it? It was really fun to make. As you can see, it's pretty easy. Um, you know, just add a little bit for the width and length if you're using a different size. Uh, pockets are good. Dashboard is fun. Inserts are the most important part, of course. And then you can add any other little fun touches you like. Sequins, I think, are always good. And a pen, of course, is important. All right, so that is my video for today. If you stuck with me through this and through the cat fight, I am very glad. <laughs> Thanks, and I will hope you come back, and please like and subscribe. Talk to you guys later. Bye.